This will keep it mirrored top to bottom. So I'll add in two edge loops here. This is going to be this sort of bracing plate that we see. Strew those out. And then I'll take the very small resulting faces over here. And I'm going to extrude those out as well. Extrude them out a little bit. Hit S, Y, 0 to flatten them out. Actually, no, I'm not going to do that just yet. I'll move them down a little bit. And then I'm going to extrude them again. And I'll hit S, X. I'll grab these edges. I know it might be a little hard to see, but these are the edges that are closest to the outside. I'll turn on my snapping and I'm going to snap it to this vertex right there. That'll just ensure that that's flat. And I'll grab this, snap it so it's level, do the same thing to the other side. And that's not very round though, so I'm going to grab these two edges and Turn off snapping, move them forward, grab this edge, maybe move it down a little bit, just so it looks a little rounder. And you see, we get it also on the bottom. Very nice. And at the very top, I'll just extrude that and scale it down a little bit, just so it's a little rounded. Probably won't bother with trying to capture that. I'll put some detail there in the normal map. Okay, now I could duplicate these right now, but I'm not going to because we haven't UV unwrapped it yet. If I duplicate these right now, I'm going to have to UV unwrap each of them separately. And I don't want to do that because we're ultimately going to be combining this into one mesh. So I'm going to cut the UV seams on this and then I will duplicate it. That way all four of them, or in this case, all eight of them, since I'm going to be putting them on both sides, have the same UVs. But I'm not cutting up the UVs yet. There's still a tiny bit more modeling to do. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add in a little something extra here just to maybe add a bit to the futuristic feel. I'm going to add sort of a circular, not quite sure what it would be called, but a circular object here that has cables connecting it to the four corners. So we have kind of an X pattern going here along the side that also has some depth to it. It's a little bit off of the corrugated walls. Just to add a little something extra to make this not your usual shipping container. So once again, you can add a cylinder. And if you want to make changes to the number of sides, you need to do that as soon as you create it. So this one's going to have 12, 12. It's going to have 12 sides. I'm going to move it so it's just about in the center. Now, if I wanted to make it exactly centered between these four corners, here's how I can do that. If I go to edit mode, and I select these four edges and I hit shift S I can bring that 3D cursor to the middle of the selection. Then I can select my cylinder, hit shift S and bring it to the cursor. Then I can hit shift S and move my cursor back to the center. Now I know that this object is perfectly centered between the four corners. Pretty nifty, right? Select that main face and extrude it out. Scale it. And, and I'll throw in more detail onto the normal map. And then I'm going to add on some cabling here. 
So once again, I'll do this with a cylinder. Just four sides. Now if I hit three to look at this from the side, I can grab it and then hit R to rotate it. Now I want to scale this along its length, but if I just hit SZ, it'll try and scale it in the global Z axis. If I hit SZZ, then I can scale it along its local Z axis. We'll move that into position. Try and get it a little bit off of the surface so that we can have it maybe cast some shadows or at least some interesting ambient occlusion. Grab that edge loop and again, G, Z, Z will allow me to move it along the local Z axis. But then something else I'll add is I'll add in something in the middle. Go there, go there, select those both, and bevel them. And then there's a little bit of a complicated uh, keyboard combination here. If I hit S, Shift, Z, Z, then you see I can scale them on both the local X and the local Y. So I'll throw in something like that. Very good. And then I actually need to shift the, uh, the origin back here. So just real quickly, cursor to selected, and then shift control alt C, origin to 3D cursor. Make sure that my rotation is applied. And then I will add on a mirror modifier but I'll do it in two axes. I'll do it in the Y and in the Z. And now you'll see I've got all four of them based just on what this one's doing. So that just about concludes the modeling portion of this. Now I'm going to get into UV unwrapping because we need to do that before we duplicate objects like this and like this to the opposite sides of the mesh.